everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As always, keep in mind that there's risk involved with each trade that you take. No one trade is guaranteed to profit. So in one way or another, you want to manage risk in a way that makes sense to you. And we'll go through some ideas in that regard as we go through some trade concepts within today's session. And you'll find in the web trader and our app that we have some tools that really make the risk management side of things quite a bit easier. Uh, and also keep in mind that what we go over is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now from our main website, uh, you have a couple options. Uh, you can trade, if, if you tend to trade on the go, you can trade from our mobile app with the same functionalities that we have uh, in our web trader. And so under the trading platforms option, you'll find a, a section for our app uh, it has the same functionalities and features, uh, signals, everything that you get in our web trader, and you can find it in the major app stores. Now, to, to log into the web trader, you just simply uh, log in here in the upper right corner, uh, and you'll find yourself in the web trader straight away. And you can trade on MT4 and MT5 accounts from one location. You can switch between your accounts very easily, live accounts, demo accounts, MT4, MT5, all from one location. Now, uh, our focus today is the, the fundamental side of things. We obviously will take a look at the technical analysis as well. Uh, if we have some trades that maybe we'll simulate uh, going through, depending on how the storylines look. But uh, you know, there's been some buzz about Tesla of late that I've seen. And so there's a perfect tool here that if there's a particular stock or commodity or forex pair whatever it might be uh, that you're interested in uh, learning more about or maybe you just want to browse through the different instruments to see if you find something interesting in the news you can use the market buzz tool and so what we'll get is a pictogram of the different instruments in whichever instrument class you pick right now by default it's on stocks but we can go to cryptocurrencies for those of you that live in an area where we offer the cryptocurrencies uh, and and the other instrument classes are here as well commodities indices etc now the larger the circle the more the instrument is buzzing and so you know it, it's no surprise Microsoft Nvidia Apple and Tesla uh, are, are some of the biggest most buzzing uh, instruments out there or stocks in this case and so I mentioned Tesla because I heard a little bit of news that came out uh, that could be positive about Tesla and so sometimes you just need to confirm things with a tool like this and other times you can just search and, and kind of randomly find things so once we click on the pictogram it'll load a page dedicated to that asset and what we see right away is the, the trend analysis. This is a technical uh, prediction. And you can see straight away the prediction is 25.2% uh, expected potential rise in the stock value of Tesla. Okay, well, that, that's not some small estimate. They're not saying 5% or 3%, which is pretty significant in and of itself. But they're talking over 25% potential rise. So someone must be pretty certain in their mind of something doesn't mean they have to be right but uh, it says something when you see that kind of prediction now if we look at the technical analysis behind it we can start to see you don't get large resistance on this stock from a technical perspective until you see these green lines up here where they're drawn where it hit in the past and came back down now we see an uptrend and it's expected to try and challenge that resistance area and that's where the suggested take profit uh, zone is, is between these two green lines, okay? Uh, and so if you want the technical breakdown, the indicators that were used, the important price levels, it's all outlined for you here uh, for the technical side of things. Now, we can also look, is there any fundamental news to help support this as well? And it doesn't take long as you scroll down. Just four hours ago, an article came out that says uh, Tesla is poised to report record third quarter deliveries. Okay, they may or may not be right. Let's check the source. Uh, we can click here and, and get the whole article and, and go right to the source of 
who's telling us this. Uh, this is coming from Euronews. And we can scroll down, read the whole article, find out what are they saying about China as well. Uh, and then you make up your own mind from an informed standpoint. There are some quotes from Elon Musk here, and they talk quite a bit about uh, expectations for Tesla within this article. And that's just one article that we found very quick uh, with this tool. And you can scroll down and look for more. Okay, uh, this is the same headline from a different source. So that starts to make you maybe believe the story, be more confident in uh, this news when you start to see, okay, someone else is giving the same idea here too. Tesla looking to post best quarterly performance ever. That That's an even stronger headline. Uh, so it's not just best quarterly per performance uh, in China, but maybe best quarterly performance ever. So uh, let's let's see if, if when the U.S. market opens, there's an uptrend. Okay, so fundamentally and technically, it looks like maybe Tesla's poised for a rise. You can start to think about other fundamentals as well then to see do they agree with what's happening. And so uh, interest rates have gone down in the U.S. More interest rates cuts are expected. That tends to be bullish with, for the stock market in general. So that's kind of in the favor of this potential rise uh, prediction that we see here uh, for Tesla. And so you start to put all of the pieces together fundamentally and it lines up with the technical prediction for Tesla. So maybe that's something you're interested in if when the US market opens, you like the entry point and check the latest headlines, make sure something new didn't come out to contradict that. Uh, and then maybe you make the move. And that's really the process uh, that can make sense with a tool like this is to see the most recent news, look at the technical prediction and see if it makes sense for you right, as you put together the technicals and the fundamentals. And, and really, we can do that with any instrument here. And you maybe have your favorites that you want to check regularly. That's fine. You also can check others that maybe you, you don't know much about and still read about even some of these that are trending a bit less could be some great opportunities, okay? Uh, Amazon trending a bit less, but still tends to have a lot of volume traded on it. So we could check that as well. So uh, that's one option for you here on the platform uh, to find some fundamental news combined with technical signals and predictions to guide you in terms of what you think the best trades will be, all right? Uh, we, I would pull up, Tesla right now, if, if the market was open in the US, we just have to, to hold off on that. Now, where else can we look for some fundamental news? The economic calendar, of course, is a place where we get uh, fundamental news country by country at designated times. And so this makes it very easy to schedule your trading strategy when you're trading with a, a tool like this because you know exactly when the news is coming and what it's about and which, in this case, currency pairings you might trade on based on what some of this data shows on our economic calendar data analysis tools here, okay? For anyone who's not used our economic calendar, but maybe you've used economic calendars in the past, you know, the economic calendar shows the prior announcements, how they came in. It shows the expected numbers for today's announcements, for the upcoming announcements, and then it has an empty column if the numbers haven't come in yet. And then when the numbers come in at the scheduled time, you can compare the actual results to the predicted results. And usually if it's better than expected or worse than expected, then you get a larger movement on the currency pairs associated with that country. And also if they're rated in this column as high importance, you tend to get a bit larger response on the charts. Okay, and many times more predictable response. Now, what we're looking at over here is you can pick the date range, you can pick the countries you want to see announcements from so you don't waste your time on maybe some of the smaller uh, announcements. Maybe you eliminate the low level like I did. I only have medium and high level announcements. I only have certain countries that I'm interested in. Some of the smaller economies, maybe I have less interest in those announcements because they tend to move uh, the the major assets a bit less. Now, if we want to take a look first at today, 
we'll pick that on the calendar. You can see these announcements already came in. So let's focus on announcements that have not occurred yet. And the next up are announcements out of the US, okay? Uh, we can keep in mind some things. You know, some areas out of the European Union, we can see uh, retail sales better than expected, uh, both month over month and year over year. That's out of Spain. So uh, you can start to get a feel, how are things going here? You know, out, out of Germany, consumer confidence worse than expected. So con consumer confidence was expected to, to, to be less negative than the last time it came in uh, less negative, but not, not as much of an improvement as expected. So uh, consumer confidence way down in the European Union, retail sales up specifically in Spain. So you can get an idea looking at the past announcements as well as to how you think maybe something in this case like the Euro might be doing. I don't see any of this being a huge effect, maybe a strengthening effect a little bit because retail sales are a pretty big deal for the economy and they came in quite a bit better than expected. So, so that could be a bit bullish for the Euro maybe moving forward. Now, if we then get announcements worse than expected out of the US, then maybe pairing the Euro with the USD could make sense, all right? Uh, but let's take a look at the tools here for the upcoming announcements. And if, if we look at durable goods out of the US, GDP growth rate, initial jobless claims, they're all at the same time. And sometimes these announcements can push and pull each other. If one comes in better than expected, one comes in worse than expected, but usually there's a focus that one is more important than the other, okay? As we look at the statistics, we might see that one really jumps out at you as to if this comes in better or worse than expected, how did it do in the past with percent of the time, which way did it move different currency pairings? And so very simple to use this tool. We'll go to the volatility tool, and uh, what we'll see when we get in the volatility area is uh, we can pick the currency pairing that we want to look at. I'll leave it on Euro USD for now. Uh, we can pick the time frame after the past announcements that we want to analyze how much did this currency pair move and in what direction. I'll leave it on four hours for now. And then we can also pick, we can qualify the results of the past announcements. How did they come in? above forecast, below forecast, matching forecast, or all of them, no matter of how they came in, okay? So uh, if this comes in above forecast, 71% of the time the USD strengthened in the past and pulled the Euro down, that's five out of seven times, the movement went down with the USD strengthening if durable goods orders came in better than expected. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? Logically, in your, in your brain, uh, if you think about if durable goods orders came in better than expected, showing maybe stronger U.S. economy than expected, then that might strengthen the USD. And in the past, that's what's happened more often than not. If durable goods have come in better than expected, above forecast, you can see the euro dropping against the USD more often than rising. Okay, 71% of the time with an average range movement of, of almost 32 pips. Okay, and you might say, well, but that's after the news came in. I will have already missed the movement. Maybe in the first 30 seconds, it already went 31 pips. We can check. So in the first five minutes after these announcements, we see actually most of them went up, a false move up in the first five minutes. So you can be ready for that. If these numbers come in above forecast, and all of a sudden you see the euro spike up in the first five minutes, maybe that's an opportunity to take an entry point that you like, that you're hoping that after four hours, it does like it did before, and most of them end up down, okay? So these statistics from the past, these movement records from the past, based on how these announcements came in, it's really powerful stuff that can give you uh, a strong indication as to how you might want to trade based on how the, these announcements come in, okay? And it's nice to check the different time frames and see that in fact you can find what were false movements much of the time in the first few minutes after the announcement, okay? Now, what if the opposite happens? Comes in below forecast, worse than expected. Look at the difference, now it's 50-50. It didn't cause a big 
sell-off of the U.S. dollar. The euro didn't go flying up 71% of the time. But at least you can see, I probably don't want to trade on this. It went up half the time and down half the time. 50-50. Okay, yeah, it went down further than it went up, but only half the time it went down and half the time it went up. I feel more confident qualifying when I would want to trade on this based on these statistics that only if this comes in above forecast, I'm confident the USD most of the time has strengthened and pulled the euro down. So I might make that move depending on in that first five minutes, if I can catch an entry point that I like. Okay. And it doesn't have to be an entry point up. It could be, it just didn't go down much yet. If it's down, you know, some of these are only down two pips. This biggest one only went down, what is that, about eight pips, nine pips. And we know after four hours, the average range movement was 32 pips. Okay, this one here is down 41 or so, 40. This one went down over 20 pips, 22, 23 pips. Okay, so uh, these entry points here then start to look nice. Most of these, maybe one of them wasn't opportunistic, and maybe that's the one you'd sit out. If you already made that move, you already can have that plan. If it moves more than 10 pips down before I can place my trade, uh, or if it doesn't give me a false spike up, uh, or what you hope to be a false spike up, then maybe you that's part of your rules, then you won't trade. Okay, but you see the opportunities here uh, and how, how this data really can help guide you as to what you might want to do. Okay, let me pause for a moment. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay, and if I see any questions pop up, I'll address them as I go. What else can we look at here? That was only one announcement, durable goods. I kind of like that one. Uh, we can look at the GDP growth rate. What effect does that have? These announcements are at the same time. Uh, Above forecast, two out of two times, so 100% of the time, uh, if the GDP growth rate came in above forecast, it looks like uh, the euro climbed in the first four hours, in the, in the hours after, okay? If it's below forecast, it went down, about 25 pips range movement. For me, that's not enough data points. One. One time it happened that it went went down, one out of one times. Above, two out of two times it went up, but there's only three data points there. I'm not so interested in that. Uh, the other one had seven, eight, ten different announcements to look at and get a better idea of the data set. Uh, it seems the durable goods was maybe driving that movement uh, with these announcement pairs. Initial jobless claims, let's look at that. How strong is the set of data? Uh, above forecast, uh, it happened three times, went up twice, down once. Okay, uh, it, that also doesn't convince me. The, the, this one almost didn't move at all. And one went down and one went up. Not real exciting for me. Below forecast, 50-50. Uh, four went up and four went down. So it feels like the, the announcement with these three occurring at the same time that was looked at the most that, that drove the movement was the durable goods orders. So that might be my focus today as these come in, what are the durable goods orders doing, okay? Now, if we go down to the next announcements, this is a speech. It's, it's a little harder to trade on the speech because there aren't any numbers coming in. You just have to pay attention to what he's saying. Uh, and, and from one sentence to the next, he can say one thing and then say the opposite uh, with a different type of wording, and you see the market swing one way and back the other. So you might be careful with speeches trying to follow the strategy that we're looking at here. But you can still analyze how has it moved when, he, when he's talked. You don't have above forecast or below forecast options here because it's a speech. There aren't numbers. Uh, but you can see four hours after the event when he has talked, uh, 58% of the time it's gone up, uh, eight neutral and 33% down. So if that is gonna drive your decision, then maybe as he starts talking, if, you, if it spikes down, uh, you expect the majority of the time it ends up up. 
when he's talking. Why might that be? Because many times they try and sugarcoat what's happening economically to get rid of fear, to make people think, hey, they're going to lower interest rates some more. The economy is going to be fine. And so then you see the USD weaken more often than it strengthens against the euro. And so 58% of the time when he talks, it ends up going up after four hours. Okay, quite dramatically the last time he spoke. And he might likely have similar things to say today. So it, you, can, you can glean some understanding here. None of them crashed down far, but one, two, three of them really went up strong. So you could have a short stop loss and a longer take profit when he's speaking in the buy direction, according to the past times he's talked. Now that's pretty vague though, because we don't know what he says <laughs> until he says it. So uh, it's a little different than trading after you see numbers come in. But there is a trend there that shows when he speaks, it seems like he's trying to ease tensions. And then the USD weakens as the equities go up and, and the euro is able to gain against the USD. That seems to be the trend during speeches for uh, Fed Chair Powell. Okay, so again, fundamental review. And this, this can drive your decision making on which way you would trade. And again, you can do small risk per trade, right? Test these ideas. Risk half a percent, one percent on, on a trade, even less. Just see, try out the strategies and see how it works for you. Okay, so pending home sales. There's a big focus on homes in the U.S. Uh, because interest rates have been so high. The, the inflation is, is really uh, started, started to cause people not to have expendable income. Home sales maybe uh, have been the last thing to drop, but I've seen some, some declining numbers of late. Uh, the expectation here is a drop in home sales year over year, but less of a drop than last time. Instead of 8.5% down, the expectation is 6% decline year over year. Uh, but the big one here, pending home sales month to month, not year to year, but month to month, they're expecting a big improvement from negative to positive in actuality. So this one maybe is where we could put our focus, the month to month, because it's actually showing an improvement. Now, these announcements are only considered medium in terms of effect on the price movements on the charts and not high level, but we could still check them out and see what has happened in the past. So if, if, that, if, if the pending home sales month over month come in above forecast, look what happens to the USD. Significant drop four out of six times. That's two thirds of the time a little better than two thirds, 67% of the time, significant drop. One of the ones that went up, barely went up. So only once was there a significant climb and four times it dropped. So there seems to be a strong trend here that if pending home sales month over month come in better than expected, the USD rapidly strengthens uh, the majority of the time. Why would that be? Well, because if the sales are coming in, uh, better than expected, the fear is we can't lower interest rates any further then because that would drive up inflation even more. Uh, and so if this, these numbers come in better than expected, uh, anticipation of less rate hikes would mean strengthening effect on the USD potentially, or of, of less rate cuts, I should say, would, would tend to be a strengthening effect on the USD, okay? Whatever the case may be as to why, you don't really have to, to walk yourself through that, we see the data, and you can trade robotically on the data as well. Two-thirds of the time, if this comes in above forecast, in the recent history, USD strengthened and pulled the euro down significantly more than up. Okay? What about the opposite? If this comes in below forecast, 50-50 in terms of direction, still more down than up in terms of distance. But now it becomes 50-50. Three of them went up, three went down. I prefer when not only are the downward movements larger, but it's also a higher percent of the time, okay? This is less convincing to me. Above forecast, larger than the upward movements on average and more numerous, okay? So you could start to dissect this data on different announcements and decide under which conditions would you follow those trends and which conditions don't convince you. OK, and you can do this type of trading plan over the weekend leading up to the coming week so that you have a plan already marked down 
for each day during the week, which announcements am I interested in trading on? And you already know if it comes in above forecast, I'll trade on this one. If it comes in below forecast, I'll trade on that one. Uh, sometimes on the same announcement, you're willing to trade in either direction because in both directions, it shows good statistics. And I can show you some examples, I think tomorrow out of Canada, the, the Canadian announcement a lot of times, in addition to others, but a lot of times the Canadian announcement's a little later in the day. There's more focus just on this announcement. And if we start looking at GDP numbers out of Canada, sometimes these announcements, even in the smaller economies, uh, and Canada's got a pretty good size economy, uh, but not like the US and, and some others. But even in the medium sized economies, sometimes you can get some nice movements. Now, uh, paired against the USD, we have it here. If this comes in above forecast, I mean, that's pretty solid. We're talking four out of four times. It's not just one or two data points, it's four of them. Uh, all four times, the Canadian dollar strengthened and pulled the US dollar down uh, in the four hours after these events if the GDP came in better than expected, higher than expected. And then in your mind, that probably makes sense. Better GDP in Canada than expected. Canadian dollar strengthens and pulls the USD down four out of four times here. Average range movement is large. Nearly 60 pips, 50, 58.7 uh, pips. So uh, these are pretty significant. And you can start to say, well, what, what about the first five minutes? One of them went up and the rest, it's only 13 pip range movement in the first five minutes. And after uh, four hours, we're talking almost 60 pips range movement. Okay, so uh, definite opportunity here on some of these announcements, uh, not just out of the US and the UK and EU, but also other countries. Now, if we look at, if this comes in below forecast, the opposite, right? Almost all of the movement is up size-wise. The two that went down barely dropped. And the ones that went up, went up two, three times the distance that those went down. So here you have double effect, higher percentage up than down. And the ones that went up, went up two or three times further than the ones that went down. So really you end up with a situation where with all of these announcements, when this comes in below forecast, you've got about 95% of the movement up and very little downward movement. So you could have a short stop, longer take profit, and see how this works out week after week as you trade on the Canadian announcements, okay? Or this one in particular when it comes in uh, with GDP numbers each month, uh, every so often, okay? And you'll get a schedule down to where you know certain announcements you like best, that this, this, the past statistics are stronger and you have an easier time pulling profits potentially from some of these announcements. And you know, it only takes five or six announcements a week that you start to have confidence in that work out for you uh, to really have a nice trading strategy. Maybe it's the CPI data in the US when it comes. That's a really major announcement. The non-farm payrolls each month. There are certain announcements that are repetitive that you, you maybe will learn that you have better results than other announcements, okay? So try a spattering of announcements that you see data that maybe it convinces you which way you trade once the numbers come in and see how it works out, not just trying it once or twice, but for a few months. And, and once you get uh, enough data from each announcement, you've tried each one maybe 10 times, uh, you'll see which ones are you having best success with statistically. Are you profiting from all of them, some of them, et cetera? Okay, and you really start to narrow down your strategy with this particular trading tool. And like I said, there are other announcements. We could look at more U.S. announcements. There's been a big focus on personal income in the U.S., personal spending uh, to see how healthy the economy is. So there are more that we can look at. There's a, a plethora of announcements each week. Uh, so you certainly can find some maybe in a time that works for you uh, and, and country that you're interested in trading on. Now, we could look at some trade opportunities based on what we already know about the fundamentals going on right now. Uh, you know, if, if we wanna look at something like gold, boy, has it been bullish. Uh, there are a couple reasons now why gold continues to be bullish. Uh, one would be fears of war expanding in the Middle East. Uh, certainly gold is a safe haven when there are fears like that. And then also 
uh, the U.S. lowering interest rates larger than expected, well, doesn't that bring back inflation fears again? If you too rapidly lower interest rates, uh, and, and they lowered a full half a percent, not just a quarter that was expected by many, uh, that could start to weaken the currency, uh, bring prices up. Uh, if, if, if now you know interest rates go down to get loans for, for houses, for cars, for business loans, uh, all of a sudden people have easier money if interest rates drop rapidly. Uh, and, and so easier money, more people spending, prices go back up again. And so as interest rates are lowered, and, and the fact that they were lowered in the U.S. in particular, maybe larger than many thought it would be, a half a percent cut, maybe there are inflation fears coming back again because, in fact, the U.S. hasn't reached the target level of inflation. It had, they haven't gotten it down to the 1.8%, still up over 2% inflation, and then a large rate cut. Uh, some are saying maybe politically motivated before the U.S., presidential election uh, that's coming up uh, may or may not be the case, but either way, the rate cut is done, uh, half a percent, and we did see uh, an initial weakening of the U.S. dollar and a surge uh, in the safe haven gold after that. And so it's interesting for gold, even now as I'm speaking, is trying to break to all-time highs once again. Uh, and so let's take a look. I'm curious, actually, at, is there a signal on gold? What's the short-term signal? It's bullish, it's a buy signal, and this signal's expecting an all-time high again, as high as 2685. It almost feels like gold wants to go to 3,000. Uh, it's certainly not my prediction, uh, but it, it, it's looking for a spot of resistance that doesn't exist uh, because it's at all-time highs. So I'm looking, where's the nice round number for people to be looking at to, to sell from? And if it gets anywhere near 3,000, uh, maybe that's a nice round number. Now, that's a ways up. We still have several hundred dollars an ounce before that would happen. Uh, but this has been quite a run. I remember it wasn't that long ago we broke above 2,000, and, and we thought that was high. Uh, now we're almost to 2,700 uh, with this short-term signal expecting a move between 2,676 up to 2685, which would be a new all time high uh, for gold. So let's see what happens. Uh, this looks like something, technically speaking, that is an uptrend. It broke this resistance back here, and it seems to be smooth sailing up to this take profit zone as long as nothing changes fundamentally, right? So protect yourself with your risk management. Obviously, you. Maybe use a stop loss or you use AVA Protect uh, if you're going to follow this signal. But the fundamentals feel like they're on the side of kind of a weaker USD right now with the rate cuts, further rate cuts expected still. Uh, Jerome Powell speaks later today, by the way. So unless he's changed his mind from just a few days back, he might talk more of the same about more rate cuts to come. Uh, maybe he'll he'll dampen down the idea of a full half cut again. Maybe he'll say uh, we're leaning towards quarter of a cut, quarter of a, a interest rate cut, uh, which maybe could temporarily strengthen the U.S. dollar and pull gold back down. Uh, but right now, barring unexpected news, there's some momentum still on gold. Uh, and, and the USD is looking somewhat weak. So let, let's say you were wanting to make a move on gold based on that signal. So I start to outline where, where I see support and resistance. Here's a support here, okay, 2650. Support, support, support. If indeed this is going to break the uptrend, in my mind it has to break this support here. And if, I, if my stop loss is down here, it's a small risk, okay? Uh, it would have to come down, break the support level to hit my stop loss. Otherwise, I can ride it up to that 2685 area where the signal said it, it expects it could go. So let's maybe say 2682, somewhere in the middle of that take profit zone from the signal, not all the way to the 2685, that top uh, line. And the stop loss, I've got it down here at 2646.
So uh, potential profit is much less than the possible loss to get my stop loss below my support level. Maybe I say, you know, I don't like that idea. You know, from from a opportunistic standpoint, I would prefer that it was a buy signal, but that I was getting in down here. I feel like I'm risking too much maybe for the potential profit that's there. So maybe I switch. I say, you know what, I'm not going to use a stop loss on this. I'm going to use Ava Protect. I can protect by the hour, by the day. I can get through Jerome Powell's speech today. I can get through tomorrow with one day protection. I can even get through the weekend with two days protection all the way to next week and have this expire on Monday at my 5 p.m. And I don't have to risk anything more than the cost of the protection. Okay. Now I can start to lower my trade size to get the amount of risk that I'm comfortable with to pay for this protection. So zero. Point five, half a lot, 0 0.4. Okay, that's less than or right around 1% of my balance, 0 0.4. My potential profit is almost the same as the cost of the protection. Now I could start to play around with the take profit now because I've got all the way to Monday that I can wait. So why cut this off early? I could go to 2,700. Because now I can be really patient because I don't have to worry about my stop loss being hit. I don't have it set. I can come back Monday when the protection is close to expiring and add a stop loss to the trade. But for now, I can let this ride through all of the volatility. I don't have to worry about if there's a temporary pullback and then it goes up. I'm okay. So because I didn't like the technical setup for a traditional stop loss, now I got creative with Ava Protect. I'm protecting through the weekend all the way to Monday for much less cost than what I was risking to that stop loss. And now I have a larger potential profit. So I'm happy to make this move maybe with that type of protection. Okay, so sometimes when you look at a technical signal, you like the direction. We looked at it's a buy signal on gold. Uh, maybe I don't like the risk setup, but I like the trade. So I find another way to manage my risk, like with Ava Protect. Because the fundamentals, I feel, line up with this move. Uh, I just didn't like the risk stratification because it's not the most opportunistic entry point. So I went a different route, knowing that there's a lot of announcements and things coming and Jerome Powell speaking. And, you know, he tends to say things that relaxes the market and causes optimism. And so maybe that might cause further weakening of the USD eventually. But understanding that uh, leading up to those announcements, the USD might strengthen before it weakens. Uh, and so with all of those ideas, Ava Protect makes sense with that kind of volatility in the short term volatility. But if in the longer term, by Monday, I think it will be in the direction of the signal, then I get through the volatility without hitting a stop loss by using Ava Protect and holding off on any stop losses until Monday when I see where the smoke clears and see if I've hit my take profit yet or not. And maybe I need to add a stop loss at that point. OK, and anything I would lose on this trade now. During the protected time period, all the way up through the expiration of the protection on Monday, all of that's added back if I lose anything, and all the profits are mine. Okay, so a unique way to manage risk in the direction of where I think the fundamental news should go longer term, but taking into account the short term fundamental news that I think could create some bumps with the stop loss. Okay, so we went the route of no stop loss now and using Ava Protect. All right, everybody, I think this is a good place to stop. We've gone through, I think, three different strategy concepts. Uh, one with the bigger picture, fundamental news on gold here with a unique way to protect against the downside uh, for the short-term announcements. Uh, the economic calendar strategy, trading on the short-term announcements. Uh, and then the fundamental news out of the market buzz, trading on bigger picture news on specific instruments like we looked at Tesla. And that's something I know I'll be looking at Tesla when it opens to see where it is and if there's an opportunistic spot in my mind or not. And you could do the same on that and other instruments if you look in the market buzz at some more articles and stories and also those trend analyses that are in the market buzz predicting directions.
All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Good luck with your trading the rest of the week uh, and have a good weekend. Okay, bye for now.